Good morning, everyone. Today, I'd like to feature um, my story of Beatrix Potter and unfinished projects and what you can do with them because we all have them in our cupboards. For some reason, whatever reason, we start something and it just never gets finished. So this slow stitch project came about because of exactly that. So I just wanted to show you what I did and um, some of the reasons why I use the pieces to create this one finished piece which is a bit of a coup considering it was an unfinished project in my cupboard for 24 years i started a cross stitch now these are the two patterns um, featuring um, mr peter rabbit these i was working i'll start at the beginning i was working in a little craft shop as a um, assistant and cross stitch was huge at the time folk art and cross stitch so in come these two pattern books now i have checked the internet and they are still available out there but you need to find them in um, on sites that sell them as vintage patterns um, i also found them on etsy and a couple on ebay so they are available if you are a fan of beatrix potter i love her i just think she was the most talented designer and story writer so my plan was to stitch these pieces into a baby blanket now i chose this beautiful ada cloth that is so soft and has these little squares already in the fabric if you can see that so it was the perfect size to piece the um, characters from these books and one's a sampler and one's just a, a general images of Peter Rabbit so they were all really good sizing to use as a baby blanket now rolling back in time I was 25 at the time um, been married a couple years and we were starting to think about having a baby so I decided I was going to make myself a baby blanket and the plan was as I said to stitch one in each of the squares and then through the center here I was going to run a blue or a pink ribbon depending on what the baby was going to be so roll forward another 25 years and baby never came for a million reasons but um, baby never came so I said to my husband this blanket which had I think five stitched images i think it was to be about 30 in the end but only five for whatever reason went into my cupboard into a plastic bag and every time i looked at it i thought oh when am i ever going to get that finished because babies weren't on my radar anymore and um, there was so much work involved in it i just never found the time so slow stitch came along which is a perfect way of using projects that you never get finished so in this scenario, I took the um, blanket and I cut out, oh gosh, it took me a bit to do it, let me tell you. I um, pondered on it for probably six months because, yeah, it took a bit to chop into this beautiful piece of fabric and um, remove the piece. And look, you can even see where I'd squared up ready on this panel for my next cross stitch pattern. So I did it, I chopped them out and used them as feature pieces in this panel, which is, I call my happy place. It's just, it's not the normal colors I would go for. I'm probably a little bit more vintage and um, more um, burgundies and creams and golds and things like this. But I do still buy these types of fabrics that I'm attracted to them. I love the bright colors. So this piece became a, a great space for um, these Harry Potter, uh, not Harry Potter, Peter Rabbit. He's now the thing, isn't he? Peter Rabbit um, images. So the first one I placed up here and I luckily was able to tell a little bit of a story. So the first one is um, Mrs. Rabbit getting the little rabbits ready for their day. And I'm guess telling them don't get up to mischief, but we can already see, yeah, bad intentions here. Then she pulls him aside here in this image and yeah, Peter, I know you're thinking it, but don't do it. But we all know where that went. She then heads off to town to get supplies. I think that's how the story goes. Not 100% sure, I might be just making it up. And then we all know that 
you know who, Mr. Rabbit, decides to um, head on out for his day and gets himself in a whole world of hurt. They are the images that um, I had and decided that they would be the start of this piece. Now this piece is a wall hanging. I can't show the whole sizing of it, but um, there's 12 inches, so double that, 24. Then there's another six inches, so another 12 inches on top of that. That is its full height. Across is 12 plus 10. So as you can see, it is a pretty big piece. So I'll start back at the front. Now, um, as I mentioned in my last video, I've inherited a lot of uh, crocheting and embroidered doilies from my grandmother's um, estate. So they're just too beautiful to chop up. And these types of pieces, Slow Stitch World, is a perfect way of storing them. So in this scenario, I had this really bright doily here, if you can see it, I'll just bring it up, where she'd embroidered the, um, what are they called, daffodils, and then crocheted a edge onto the actual doily. So that was one, and then there was another one here. It was quite big, so I put my hands right around it, that one there. So she'd um, embroidered this one and also crocheted an edge on it. So all that satin stitch and then a crocheted edge coming down this side here and then around the bottom. So that's the second one and I believe, I think, I think that might be it. Then I just worked in, oh no, here's one on the corner here. That one there was another one that she did. Okay, I'm gonna bring that up a little bit closer so you can see it. So this became a place, oh, that's another, another item from grandma. Actually, no, this is from um, another grandmother in our family across the tree line. This is a doily that she never completed. I inherited a box of her cottons and inside the cottons, in amongst it were some patterns at the bottom and this little random piece of embroidery. So she obviously decided she was gonna start this pink doily. It's just a treble chain going around to build up the doily. So it literally just stopped. So perfect little piece to add to this um, color wave of these bright colors. Then in my travels of hunting around op shops and salvaging uh, old embroidery, I found this doily that had this piece of uh, embroidery in it. And I think there's another piece down here. Yeah, it's very, very um, cluttered with color and it's probably a little tricky to see it, but there's this one through here as well. Okay, that there came from something. I don't think it was my family. I think it was just a piece I found at the op shop. So in amongst it, I've placed treasures from my family, treasures I found in op shops, and then um, the Peter Rabbit pieces that I made. So as I've said before, Slow Stitch is a perfect way of bringing all of these pieces together to create a collage. Now, here's an example where there was a, just one single little flower on a doily that I just cut it out. I've stitched it down with some stab stitch, and there she is tiniest little French knots in the center there in yellow. Let me just show you that little, whoop, 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 there we go. Getting used to these camera angles, just tiny. So once I placed my background, which is all the big colorful squares, I then um, burrow stitched them all, as in just lines and lines of straight stitching. That then attached it to the wadding that I used behind. Okay, so first of all, I tacked everything down. Then I went back and wherever there was some fabric, I burrow stitched it all down. Then I started laying on top all of the elements that I um, have collected and started collaging together randomness. I didn't try and overthink this too much. I literally, wherever there was a gap, I put something. So even this little spot here has the potential of having something added. 
And the, the beautiful thing about this piece is I'm still adding to it. I've been working on this for over a year and every so often I'll come across something that matches these colors and I just add it. So I haven't backed it because I'm still going and why not? In my plans is to hang it on the wall and literally walk up to it, take it off the wall and add something else to it because it's like a collage, a collection of um, things that just make me feel good. Something else on the bottom of the piece is some lace that my grandmother had made. Um, I believe it is the most difficult thing to make. I've had a little try of tatting, but boy, and it was Anne Brooks who um, actually introduced me to it. I've always admired it from a distance and Years ago, I sort of looked into some books that were specialising in tatting and I couldn't make heads or tails of it. Then, of course, YouTube came along and Anne Brooks and I was like, well, we'll give it another go. And boy, it is difficult, really difficult. I'm a crocheter, so you'd think that I'd have half a chance of winning the battle. But no, it's just so fine and so delicate. And yeah, was not for me but I had this beautiful piece of tatting that was uh, on a doily that uh, grandmother had made and she hadn't embroidered the actual in doily yet. She just put the edge of tatting on. So it was, um, yeah, it just had to be done. I took the tatting off and I've attached it to the bottom of this piece so that it will sort of decorate the bottom edge. So a great way to spare, sort and spare and, you know, add all your bits and pieces to. Now, actually, I've just spotted another doily here. This is another one of Grandma's doilies, and it's, I believe this pattern is called the pineapple. It's a pretty common pattern, that one. You see it a lot when you're going through the op shops, that particular design. Okay, so, yeah, this is my uh, Beatrix Potter piece, and in amongst it, I've embroidered some slow stitch myself so when I placed in all of the squares of fabric I added a few that were just plain as you can see here there's this cream piece of fabric it is actually um, one of the bits of fabric left from removing all of the embroidery from doilies so I was able to salvage that as well and I popped it in and just left a space so as the piece came together I had this tiny little space that I could do some of my own embroidery in and have a little play there's another one there there's a rectangle of plain in there and I just did those lazy daisies with some colonial knots in the center where's another one there's another one there just a rectangle and then I edged it with some pom-pom trim that I had lying around. That one there, not only did I embroider it, but I then had all of these little lace motifs that um, I popped in as well, little embroidered flowers to create that texture in front of the um, embroidery itself. Where else have I got? One more down the bottom here is another little embroidery I did, which is um, my embroidery, the little purple flowers behind, and then over the top, I placed um, the little flowers that were pre-made on uh, a machine. So it sort of created that layered and then a little bit of ribbon to finish it off. So that is my um, piece and a really good way for you to grab out those unfinished projects. We all have them, and for whatever reason, they don't get finished. I honestly believe it's we lose interest in them because they're just not quite coming together, and we just don't want to admit that it. we don't like it, and we pop it into the cupboard. Get them out because the slow stitch world is uh, a fantastic place of reinventing the piece, and there is a lot of work that goes into our um, needlework so even if it's an unfinished doily pull it out chop it up I know that's hard to say but chop it up and add it to a slow stitch piece why not it's only sitting in the cupboard and if you do a piece that hasn't got a backing on it like this well it's a perfect place to here's another unfinished project here's a treasure I've just inherited or a treasure I've found add it to the um, wall panel so I do look forward to one day hanging this on a wall and uh, continuing to add little snippets of bits and pieces to my Peter Rabbit 
wall hanging. Okay, thank you very much. Thanks for taking a look with me and I'll see you all very soon. Bye-bye.